Good morning. What a beautiful morning we have today. Um, I hope your week has been going well. It's been several weeks since I've done a news video like this, so thank you for watching. A uh, few things that I want to share. This coming Monday night, August the 9th, at 6 p.m. is our monthly Young at Heart event. Now, Young at Heart is a ministry at our church for people 50 and older, and every month they have a carry-in dinner with uh, entertainment, great time of food and fellowship. But this month, the special guest is David Kane, who's a world record juggler, a great believer. Um, and we just thought, let's invite the entire church because some of you with families and children, I think you would really enjoy the presentation that David Kane will be doing through juggling, be very entertaining. So. Uh, plan to come for that carrying dinner. Bring uh, food to pass, a dessert to pass. Uh, we'll provide chicken uh, as kind of the main meat, but uh, bring plenty of food to share. Come at six o'clock fellowship time and enjoy that jugglers program uh, this coming Monday night at Young at Heart. Also, this is a time of year when college students are coming and going. So some of our own students are heading out to go to colleges in other parts of the country. But then we have a lot of college students coming into the area and we always end up with a large number of incoming students. Thank you for being welcoming to them. Part of welcoming them is making seats available. So we're gonna to have to add chairs to our sanctuary seating. We've had more space, more leg room in recent months, but we're going to add chairs in order to make room for them. Uh, it is great to kind of be back to normal with all of the students there a lot of vibrant energy as we serve the Lord together. Just a reminder that the 930 worship service, there's more seating always available there. However, I want you to be a part of a small group. So if your small group meets at 930, be in your small group and come to the 11 o'clock hour. At 11 o'clock, we do have the North Worship Center, so we broadcast the video back there. I also want you to know that probably in both services, if you have like social distancing issues that you would prefer to be further apart. Um, the cafe space where the tile is, um, normally where the coffee is served, we've wired up that TV that's in there and you would be able to watch the service sort of live uh, right there in the cafe space if you just need a little more breathing room and a little more leg room. So all of that is coming up and you'll see those things rolling out in the weeks ahead. The main thing, however, that I want to talk to you about is a burden that the Lord has put on my heart as, as pastor, uh, that our focus needs to be moving toward missions here in whatever the next season might be. So this is a burden that the Lord put on my heart a couple of years ago, and we've been developing mission strategies over the years, but specifically, I believe the Lord wants us to be involved as church family doing partnerships with missionaries and churches in other parts of the country and the world. So what we want to do is we want to develop opportunities for you to be a part of those trips and a part of those services. So we don't consider ourselves to be coming in with great skills to uh, save the day somewhere. We just want to be servants. How can the Lord use us to encourage and serve believers and churches in other parts of our country and around the world. So I'm working with missionaries. We've done a trip to Costa Rica a few years ago. COVID frankly put everything on the back burner uh, with travel restrictions, couldn't really do anything. Well, now we want to move missions and this particular strategy to the front burner again. So you'll be seeing some opportunities rolling out. One of the most immediate and perhaps most available opportunities to do missions has to do with disaster relief. So uh, the Southern Baptist churches of which we're part have a national and international disaster relief program. It's a, a mechanism that's well developed, training is available. So whenever a disaster occurs, um, groups and teams are sent to the area to provide um, mud out or chainsaw or construction or uh, making food or childcare, and ministry is always involved in these efforts and so what we do is um, our state has a disaster relief coordinator 
who organizes the training that's required because all of those who are sent out on teams have to go through training. But the director also organizes the trips that, that our teams are sent out for. Our director right now is Pastor John Heading in Beaver Creek, and we have an opportunity to be a part of training that's taking place in Beaver Creek. So in-person training is happening on Saturday, September the 11th. It's an all-day thing. It goes from 8 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon, but that in-person training is very valuable. Uh, Pastor Heading is also doing training on video, so if uh, September 11th doesn't work for you, you might be able to still participate and be trained using the videos. All that to say this, I'm excited about disaster relief because this is something families can do. So if you've got middle school students or high school students, you can go for this training and you can be a part of a disaster relief team as a family or as a father and son or mother and daughter or however that might work in your situation. We can't send our teens out without parental guidance but as a, as a family unit or a subunit of your family, you can be involved in disaster relief. Typically, those teams are sent out within the state or within the country. So it's not always international. It's, it's very rarely international travel, but that does happen with specific needs sometimes as well. So September 11th, training in Beaver Creek. It's an all-day uh, Saturday training, but I would really encourage you that if you feel that the Lord would have you be involved in short-term missions, as we're getting other things rolling out in the future, this might be one of the more exciting things for you to be a part of as well. Please come and talk to me if you've got any questions at all, and uh, be on the lookout for more information that's coming our way as a church. Please be praying about it too. Uh, we need the Lord to open these doors of opportunities for us to serve. We're looking forward to Jesus returning. Until he does, we need to be busy and good stewards of the time and the resources that he has given to us. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful week. May the Lord shine his face upon you this week. Thanks for watching.